Extreme Programming Primary Practices. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about primary practices in extreme programming. So there are 13 primary practices in extreme programming. The 13 practices are sit together, 10 minute build, incremental design, weekly cycle, quarterly cycle, informative workspace, team, test first programming, continuous integration, Slack, stories, energized work, and pair programming. Let's see all of these 13 primary practices one by one and understand what these primary practices talk about. Now the first primary practice is sit together which means co-located team and co-location of the team. That means all the members of the team sitting at one place or at one office. They are co-located um, which uh, which basically enhances or helps in communication and collaboration uh, to be more effective. If the teams are co-located, then they can collaborate or communicate in more effective way. For example, I'm sitting on the same floor as my other team members. I can simply walk to the other person's desk to clarify my doubt. But the, if the team is not co-located, I have to um, call them or I have to... Um, ping them over the chat to get the information that I would need. So extreme programming practice says that have a co-located team to enhance more collaboration and communication within team. The second practice is 10 minute build, right? So create a build and run automated tests in a maximum 10 minutes. Automated build and test reduces efforts and costs. So 10 minute build says that you have to create a build and run automated tests in not more than 10 minute. So it has to be integrated software or a continuous integration. And you, whenever you know, like you have a code check-in, try to build uh, that and run the automated test within 10 minutes to ensure that the build and the test are still fine and there is nothing broken. So because of this automation of the build and automation of the test or, uh, or sanity check, this reduces a lot of effort and time, uh, effort and costs in case the build is broken. So if there is a manual process around this, the, it will require a lot of manual effort to deploy, to build, uh, and then to actually run those tests to ensure that the build is broken or not. So having an automated build is very important. That's the second practice of extreme programming. Now whole team, so bring together all skills and perspectives necessary within the team. So teamwork produces higher quality product. Now the team, the entire team with different skill set and perspectives will bring the higher quality product or higher quality outcomes, right? So in the team, there should be people from different skill set and different perspective to uh, bring the better quality product or software. So that's another practice in extreme programming. Informative workspace. Workspace should have visible lists, graphs to show project progress, and team should have visible graphs and notice notices about tasks. So informative workspace is basically everyone on the floor or within the project area should be aware where the particular project is and where the particular iteration is. What is the actual progress? What are the timelines? All these things should be available or uh, stick on the walls and everyone in the team should be aware of these details. And a team should have the visible graphs, be it, you know, like the actual wall or the softwares that are available nowadays, like Jira, etc. So you have visible lists and graph which show where the project is at, what tasks that whole team is working and who is working on what. And everyone is aware of what um, things are happening within the team. So that's another practice in extreme programming. Um, energized work. So work-life balance promotes enthusiasm and effective contribution. Workplace should be stress-free 
and there shouldn't be any overtime. So energized work will uh, be possible only if there is a work-life balance for all the team members that are working within the team. So that's work. Energized work is uh, another primary practice in extreme programming that there should be uh, a complete balance of work and life and there shouldn't be any stress in the workplace. So team members in the workplace should not be doing overtime and they should be stress free. They should be vocal. They should be um, uh, able to convey their thoughts about uh, the, the work life balance and if there is any stress within the team. Now, the next practice is slack. So include some minor tasks that can be dropped if needed. Don't overcommit and under deliver. Set realistic attainable target. So what this means is um, you don't the team shouldn't overcommit and under deliver. So as a team in extreme programming, try to um, get some minor tasks in the iteration and in case you are not able to deliver the, those tasks can be dropped. Also, if there is something, some big piece of work that you know that cannot be achieved or uh, it will require a lot of uh, extended hours or extended hours of work, uh, do not overcommit that, that sort of work. So only commit the amount of work as a team that can be delivered within that particular iteration. And also setting up realistic attainable target is very important in extreme programming. The next practice is pair programming. So as in um, the first tutorial of extreme programming, we saw that pair programming uh, is one of the key things in extreme programming. So two heads are better than one. So two people working together on single piece of task um, is better than just one person focusing and just applying one perspective to solve that problem. Now, this keeps each other on task. So everyone is, uh, both members at least know what what uh, is going on and they both understand the functionality and they add the their perspective to bring up the better solution. And brains, two people brainstorming uh, together clarifies things more and fills the gap. The other thing is hold each other accountable to team standards. So because you both are working or both people are working in, uh, on single piece of task, so there uh, there will be team standards that had been set for uh, the development work or any sort of work within the team. So the other person needs to uh, ensure that uh, he uh, uh, the other person is accountable for the, to follow those team standards and. Um, then in pair programming, you take programming tasks in pair and alternate part partner after one to three hours. So you just change the partner. So who, who is coding uh, at the moment, you just change it after one to three hours to get the different perspective and uh, the other person keeps giving the feedback around the, um, around the gaps and the the quality of the development happening so pair programming is another primary practice of extreme programming the next uh, practice is stories uh, wherein you describe requirements in the form of user stories so rather than having the requirements in form of um, requirement specification document the big documents that uh, uh, we used to have in um, old development uh, approaches like waterfall in extreme programming, you should be having the stories which define the user uh, requirement in the form of user stories. And uh, user stories are, are the brief statements of required capabilities that can be finished in short time frame. So if it is uh, you are able to accommodate that particular piece of work in an iteration, then that's what you should be looking at in extreme programming. So another practice is the stories. You should be having stories in extreme programming approach. The next thing or next uh, practice is the weekly cycle. You do planning on a weekly basis, review the weekly progress and pick a week's worth of stories to implement this week. Now weekly cycle is important in extreme programming. You do not plan 
big iterations or uh, iterations worth of months. You do planning weekly, you review the weekly progress, see what has been finished, and then uh, you pick what can be done in the uh, another week or can be implemented in the another week. So that's the weekly cycle. Uh, the next practice is the quarterly cycle wherein um, you do the high level planning which is for three months. You pick a quarter's worth of stories or quarter worth, uh, worth of requirement which is uh, the stories in extreme programming and then you review the lessons learned and improvements implemented. So you, you just uh, do not ignore what things went well or went bad in the previous iteration you you have those let lessons learned and ensure that you uh, implement those improvements in this quarterly cycle meeting or quarterly planning meeting then you focus on the big picture where the project fits within the organization or within the whole landscape that's the another a big aspect of extreme programming practice that you have to make sure you do not lose the sight of the big picture that you you have to ensure that whatever you are delivering adds the value um, in the whole approach so in quarterly cycle you ensure that you see the big picture and see where this particular project fits within the organization or for the end user and the customer the next um, practice is the continuous integration. Continuous integration is very important in extreme programming because you have to integrate and test changes frequently. If you do not have continuous integration functionality and tools available, it's really tedious task to do all those manual code build, deployment, and then run the sanity check or run the, um, the build verification tests to see whether the build has passed or failed. So continuous integration, uh, what in turn it does is as soon as you check in the code or developer uh, in the team checks in the code, um, the build happens automatically, the build is done, it is deployed on the test machine and then there is a, a build verification test suite, test suite which is also automated, uh, can be run by the um, uh, continuous integration tool itself to ensure whether the build has passed or failed. So integration and testing changes frequently and having continuous integration in place or automated build in place is really important and uh, important practice in extreme programming. Regular integration defect uh, defects errors um, quickly. So uh, you have to verify the integrated code by automated build and tests and also um, you have to ensure that uh, regular integration uh, happens and it detects errors quickly. Now the next practice in extreme programming is test first programming. What this means is that you write tests before you actually implement code. Right? So test first programming as the name suggests um, you implement the test cases first or you write the test cases first. Um, and then you actually run those tests to see the code fail. Now you actually write your development code to make sure that uh, those tests are passed. So you rerun the test and see if those tests pass. And you do this cycle uh, or refactoring until all of the test cases that you have written in the first step are passed. So this test first programming approach is another primary practice of extreme programming. And uh, the last practice in extreme programming is incremental design. So design incrementally. Incremental design can incorporate feedback from customers and incremental design improves the quality. So rather than designing the whole big solution in big bang approach, what extreme programming practice or what extreme programming development approach suggests is that you do the incremental design. Right. You, in, you do the design, you do um, uh, initial level design, you get the feedback of what is good, what is bad in that, what improvements need to be implemented. And then you incorporate the feedback and build incremental design um, and address any of the quality improvements or any of the bad uh, design uh, decisions that happen in, uh, in the previous iterations to, to come up with the best design possible for that particular solution or software. So incremental design is 
or one of the other primary practices in extreme programming so these are these were the 13 primary practices in extreme programming very important for ISTQB agile uh, tester certification exam so please make sure you watch this tutorial and learn all these 13 primary practices in detail for ISTQB agile tester certification exam thank you